the title against former WBC champion Tim Witherspoon. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Larry Merchant and Sugar Ray Leonard. We're at the Omni in Atlanta. And, Larry, I think it's fair to say that this fight in these parts was rather a hotbed of apathy. But suddenly, in the last couple of days, it has taken on a new significance. Well, even in the last few hours, it was just a fight for a fraction of the heavyweight title, a third. But HBO has announced just a couple of hours ago that we will air a series of heavyweight championship fights, including a Spinks-Holmes rematch in April that will lead to the unification of the heavyweight championship basically for the first time since Muhammad Ali. One champion at last when we get there. For the fighters tonight, what it means is that instead of fighting for a pile of money this high, they're fighting for a pile of money that high. And I'm sure Ray can relate to that. <laughs> well, there's no question about it. So all of a sudden, there's significance, Ray, and there's big bucks involved in this fight. And even at that, Tony Tubbs comes in at the weigh-in at 244 pounds. That's got to be a surprise. It's quite surprising and quite disappointing, personally. I think that Tony Tubbs, being a heavyweight champion, owed it to himself and the public to be in better shape. Quite naturally, it's always great to be in a higher tax bracket. So this should motivate the guys. You know, I was went into the uh, dressing room with some of the fighters. They're like a used car lot. Those guys were not in shape. Maybe the money should motivate. Well, as we mentioned, this has all taken place just in the last few hours, and we'll see if it does motivate him. Tony Tubbs is a guy who has rather quietly put together a 22-0 record. He's not the kind of guy that's going to create a crowd in public. And he's got a couple of material trappings, but still takes an unassuming posture. The average jogger from Ohio does not drive to the park, hop out of his Rolls Royce, and begin his morning workout. But this is no ordinary jogger. This is the heavyweight champion of the world. And Tony Tubbs is miles away from his street fighting days in Cincinnati. I didn't fight my first amateur bout until I was 17 years of age, but I was always a street banger anyway. I started going down to St. Mark's Church seen signs that said if you want to learn how to box come down. I figured that I was pretty good anyway so me and some friends of mine took off and we went down there to try our luck. Luck was with Tubbs and after St. Mark's Church took him off the streets it sent him on his way to a successful amateur career with 240 wins, 13 losses, AAU and world titles to his credit. In the heavyweight division it always seemed to come down to Tubbs and Louisville's Greg Page. Page wound up with the best of the series. Tubbs' amateur days were fought under Muhammad Ali's tutelage, and eventually, he sparred with the champion. I got my first black eye from Muhammad. I was mad because he blacked my eye, you know, even though I was an amateur. Muhammad came outside and told me, he said, what you getting so mad about? Don't you know I'm, I, he said, don't you know I'm the world's heavyweight champ? I'm the greatest. You can't set no black eye from me, who you go set for? He said, well, you must be one tough kid, right? Ali found out how tough when the young heavyweight decked the champion while sparring. Back home, everybody was excited. That was something uh, that gave Tony a lot of motivation, like maybe I can do it, you know. Just think I'm sparring with the greatest champion of all times. So maybe someday I can be champion. And it did seem that Tubbs was on his way to a promising career, but then he was besieged with setbacks. Hopes for the Olympics were shattered, and Tony turned pro, but friend and promoter Harold Smith was convicted of embezzlement, and tragedy struck the Tubbs family when Tony's brother Derek was killed in a dispute. It was just like a, a nightmare. It seemed like my whole world ended. Times got rough, and he didn't know really whether to go up or down. Tony didn't know. He was all confused about his career. First of all, mom come first, okay, and if she ain't right, you know, I'm going to stay there until my mother is, is right. You know, she got to the point where she would tell me to go ahead and go on and get on with my career, but I didn't want to stray away too far from the house because I always wanted to be there if she needed me. Fighting out of six. With the support of his family, Tony was able to get back on track with his boxing career. When he faced James Bonecrusher Smith, the winner was promised a shot at the WBA title. The light was now at the end of the tunnel. It seemed like it was the door open up for him again. He fought a guy called Bonecrusher. You know, why did they name this dude Bonecrusher? I was frightened when I saw this, you know, how he was built, so strong looking. But I think my little boy would be able to handle it, you know. 
So I sit there and relax at ringside, and after a couple of rounds, you know, I thought it's going to be okay. It panned out that Tony won. This title shot was his ticket to the championship fight. Greg Page was holding the belt. I didn't feel too bad about this bout because uh, I felt that he and Greg Page went back a long ways during amateur time. It was always a win and a lose between him and Greg Page. I made it all pay off when it came down to the title. Basically the same way. It's like a chess game. We both know each other for years and know each other's style. He never changed. In fact, you know, I grew a couple inches, so we was, I was looking him eye to eye then. And you know, it wasn't looking up to him. And Tubbs set out to even things from his amateur days. But this time, it was for the WBA title. At the end of 15 rounds, a new champion was crowned. Tony Tubbs had realized his dream and was now able to do for his family things he always wanted to do. Like provide a new home, a better, happier life, and a son to be proud of. He's reached one of the goals that he's been striving so hard for. Finally, you know, mm -hmm. and hoping he can be champion for a while. Makes Cincinnati real proud of him, and I know his family's already proud of him, and you know, People that, a lot of people really are in his corner and hoping he'll be there for a while and be able to hold a belt and get a few more belts. The name of the game is boxing, you know. And after this fight, you know, they'll see my skills and I take my skill into the ring with the best of them. I match skills with Pinkman Thomas, Michael Spinks, who I'll come, I want to match my skill against them all. Because I know that win, lose, or what, I am still the better fighter than me. I'm still learning as a heavyweight. But my amateur background speaks for itself. I've been a champion practically all my life. You know, and I hold my own against, you know, the best of them. So coming up, it's the battle for the WBA Heavyweight Championship between the champion Tony Tubbs and the challenger Tim Witherspoon. Well, the old Tubbs little boy Tony has always been the underdog, even tonight, as the title holder. With some more words about an unknown champion, here's Larry Merchant. We've just seen a profile of a young fighter with some obvious skills. He probably has the fastest hands of a big man since Muhammad Ali. He's a clever boxer and he knows how to win. But in a few minutes, we're going to see a different kind of profile. This kind of profile, one almost wants to avert one's eyes. In defense of a title that could be worth millions, Tony Tubbs is weighed in at perhaps 20 or 25 pounds more than he should. What can you say about such a thing? Sometimes youth does outrun its mistakes. He thinks it's sexy, but I don't know who else does. Although this is the year of the refrigerator, and the refrigerator's wife thinks he's sexy. The point is, of course, that Tony Tubbs isn't giving himself the best chance. So the question tonight is less whether this will become a showcase for his skills than whether he squanders those skills. And the companion question for Tim Witherspoon is whether he uses this opportunity, whether he is enough of a fighter to exploit the weaknesses in the champion, who is more sweet man than science man. New WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Terrible Tim Witherspoon. For Terrible Tim Witherspoon, the championship came much too quickly. Up until the page fight, Witherspoon had been known more to the public for his loss to former WBC champion Larry Holmes than the 17 wins he had on his record. Going into the page fight, he'd proclaimed himself the uncrowned champion. After that fight, the title and belt were all his. But Tim Witherspoon never got the accolades that go with being the heavyweight champion. As fast as he'd climbed to the top, he fell. And on August 31st, only five months after winning the title, he made his first defense against Pinklin Thomas. At the end of the evening, the title and belt belonged to the challenger. And new WBC heavyweight champion. Caitlin Finky Thomas. The loss was devastating, but sometimes a fighter needs to step back in order to move ahead. For Tim Witherspoon, there were still lessons to be learned. I wasn't all, all, you can say, cocky. You know, I was just, I was just positive, and I knew I could do these things. I knew I was the best heavyweight out there, and I felt as though nothing could stop me. No boxer could stop me. So, so you know, this was my problem. 
I had to cool down just a little bit. He was in the fight. I had told him uh, uh, um, things to do in the fight, and he totally ignored, ignored it because his mind wasn't on the fight when he was fighting Pinklin Thomas. It, you know, it was like he didn't really care. True, there was a lot of people around um, telling me, hey, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. I shouldn't have listened to all that. I think I should have just just thought about the fight, but it was it was too much. It was too much that night. You know, it's too much even way before that. When Tim Witherspoon stepped into the ring that night, he had much more on his mind than Pinklin Thomas. I have a sister, Cheryl, a uh, husband. She had just got married less than a year. And her husband, he had passed the same week of the fight. And my mother, you know, she had a, a major operation. And she was in the hospital and had told my family, members of my family, not to say anything to me. But they went and told me anyway, and they're kind of like, wow. Then there were the constant business battles with promoter Don King and manager Carl King. Witherspoon felt the Kings were helping themselves to too much of his purse and made numerous threats to pull out of the Thomas fight. Don King, on the other hand, saw the entire misunderstanding, a result of the people hanging around Witherspoon. It's the whispers, the towel carriers, the bucket carriers, whatever name they uh, may go by. But they're the agitators, the guys who really whispers in the fight is here because they have a selfish and vested interest to try to uh, attain for themselves. And so they play upon uh, these fighters or any star for that matter. Since the Thomas fight, Witherspoon has become much more educated in the politics of boxing and realizes a good relationship with the Kings is a must. I want to thank Don King for giving me, I'm really thanking him, that's my man, for giving, for giving me a second chance. Now Witherspoon appears headed on the right path of becoming only the third heavyweight besides Floyd Patterson and Muhammad Ali to regain the title. And one more thing, the return of trainer Slim Jim Robinson, who brings a maturity and boxing expertise to the Witherspoon camp, allowing Tim to concentrate on only one thing, the heavyweight title. I know what it, I know what it is to, 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 to fight for a title. I know what it is to keep it. And that's what I have to do, because I, you know, I have to have to have a family to feed. And I can't let nothing stay in the way. I just, whatever it is I have to take, or whatever I have to give, I just gotta keep on going to, to make it be successful in life. There was never any doubt that Tim Witherspoon possessed the tools to be champion. The only concern was his concentration in the ring. It now seems certain that tonight, when he steps into that ring, Witherspoon's only opponent will be WBA champion Tony Tubbs. So a look at Tim Witherspoon, and here he is on this night. He's been very calm before the fight, although I must say, Ray, he looks rather intense right here. Well, this fight means a lot to him quite naturally, and uh, I think he realizes that uh, Tubbs is somewhat overweight, 18 pounds if you want to be accurate, and uh, I think he sees an opportunity because of the slow Tubbs. Tim Witherspoon does look rather fit right now. He's had some criticism of his style in a couple of fights. The thing I like about Tim Witherspoon is that when he lost, he didn't crawl into a hole the way Michael Dokes and Jerry Cooney did. He came back from adversity. He had five fights last year. He won them all decisively. He made himself a hungry fighter, and he's still going for it. And well, that says a lot for a fighter. Say that one of the reasons that he had trouble with Pinklin Thomas is he couldn't counter Thomas's jab. But tonight, in Tony Tubbs, he meets a counter puncher. And there is a look at Tim Witherspoon's record. He's lost the two fights, one to Holmes, one to Thomas, 16 knockouts. He's not a guy that's going to go after the knockout necessarily, but he'll take it, obviously, if it's there. He's not a bad finisher. He does look very calm. That's always been a good sign for a fighter. Well, he is calm, and uh, what he has really has going for himself is the fact that uh, he's a conditioned fighter. I think what hurts him sometimes is personal problems, and it becomes a mental thing. Because of those two losing fights, oddly enough, Witherspoon is favored by two to one tonight. He is better known to the public than the champion is. If the champion had come in in his best shape, I'd have made him two to one favorite. The fact is, if there's been any ongoing problem with Tim Witherspoon, perhaps it is his stamina. And the other side of that coin is true of the champion, Tony Tubbs. He's really been more effective in the later rounds than he has in the early rounds. In his fight with uh, Pinklin Thomas, he had this like a daisical attitude. I mean, he was taking the jab of Pinklin Thomas. He can't afford to do the same thing with Tony Tubbs. Tony Tubbs is a very good boxer, superior boxer, movement. But again, the weight will uh, slow down Tubbs. The other 
criticism, of course, of Witherspoon is the fact that somebody once said he has one speed, slow. Now, the question about Tubbs is how slow is he going to be at 244 pounds? Well, also, there's a paradox about him, which is that he's big and strong, but he doesn't punch that hard. I don't think he's ever knocked down a top heavyweight, or, or, or that I can recall ever hurt anybody except Larry Holmes momentarily. And so Tony Tubbs, the champion, prepares to come into the ring now. He says at 244 pounds, he's all right. But he was also quoted back in 1979, and admittedly, it's almost seven years ago, when he fought a fight, an amateur fight, at 220 pounds. That's Leola Tubbs, his mother, who is at every one of her little boy's fights, as she puts it. In 1979, when he fought an amateur fight at 220, he said he's just too heavy, about 10 pounds too heavy. Now, again, I admit that's seven years ago, but nevertheless, we are talking about a difference of 34 pounds if you count the fact that it needs well, at that time at 210 you know, is good his, his MOS is that he's never really been a serious trainer. He calls himself TNT, and, and, and I know that that doesn't mean totally nuts for training. <laughs> should point out another thing about his weight also, and that is that Jimmy Ellis, who will be in his corner, just before the fight, when we spoke with Jimmy Ellis, Ellis said if he comes in at 225, 26, or 27, he'll be lean and ready. Well, here he is at 244. Now, his record, of course, cannot be questioned. 22-0, and 0, he has not fought the caliber of opponents that Tim Witherspoon has, however. But you never know how good an unbeaten fighter is. You just never know. He may be the best of the whole bunch of them out there. Well, I know, in fact, you did think that he was a very, very talented fighter, did you not, Larry? I've always thought so, but uh, I, I, was I was mistaken in believing that he had matured to the point where he would take care of himself, because in his recent fights, he did weigh around 225, 226. He's never knocked out a name opponent. And that, of course, the fact that once more, Leola Tubbs, his mother, ringside here. And I'm sure she has fond hopes of being able to do that with her son after the fight. A look at the tail of the tape. A reach advantage for Tony Tubbs. But reach is really deceiving, I think, in the fact that it is wingspan that is measured. So we're really not talking about too much. You know, we should also point out that Witherspoon, although he looks solid, weighs about 10, 12 pounds more than he did when he fought Larry Holmes a couple of years ago. Uh, more than he did when he fought Pinklin Thomas. I don't know whether that weight means anything to him, whether it's significant or not. Common opponents, probably insignificant. You can see they had virtually the same results against Greg Page, Bone Crusher Smith, and Jerry Williams. Almost identical. So there's really little to choose between these two. And here is HBO's Punch Stat, our little toy that will give us a quantitative rather than a qualitative profile of the fight. You can see how many punches Tony Tubbs threw in some recent fights. In the fight against Miller, that was a two-round knockout. And here are the jabs he throws. Although he has wonderfully fast hands, he doesn't always throw a lot of jabs, as you can see. And here is Tim Witherspoon. He throws a, a more punches usually, but his fight against James Broad was also a two-round knockout, so you have to throw that out. So generally, uh, uh, Witherspoon throws uh, 40, 45 punches and uh, the other man throws 35 tubs. And here are the, uh, the number of jabs. Again, this is just quantitative, not qualitative. Here are the rules for the fight. 10-point must system. Three judges will score the fight. There is not a standing eight count, and the only time that you can be saved by the bell is in the final round. The three knockdown rule, as is the WBA rule, will be in effect. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Brad Nessler, for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the magnificent Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, Don King Productions, in association with the Omni, bring you King's Dream, a heavyweight boxing extravaganza. We ask that you now all rise and join our own Isaac Hayes for the national anthem. dawn's early light what so proudly we hail ladies and gentlemen tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the georgia boxing commission in conjunction with the world boxing association 
members of the Georgia Boxing Commission at ringside with us. Asa Gordon, Carol Clark, Lindsey Rouse Jr., James Freeman, and Georgia Boxing Commission Chairman Lanny Franklin. Our judges for our main event at ringside from Maryland, Harry Sanchini. Judge number two from Arizona, Robert Ferrara. And our third judge from New Jersey, Edward Woods. Our timekeeper is Barry Richardson. Our knockdown timer is Kevin Corcoran. Our doctor at ringside, Dr. Jack Burge. Our referee and third man in the ring for this main event from Illinois, Nate Morgan. Our main event scheduled for 15 rounds for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World. First in the red corner from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, wearing blue trunks with white trim. He tipped the scales at 227 pounds. His record, 23 wins, two losses, 16 victory by knockout. Former world champion and current North American Boxing Federation heavyweight champ. He's ranked number three by the WBA. Welcome terrible Tim Witherspoon. With gold and black trim, he weighed in at 244 pounds. His record, 22 victories, no losses, 15 wins by knockout. The undefeated WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Tony TNT Cup. And Tubbs getting the early crowd support here, it seems. Morgan, the referee. Fifteen years ago, Barry, okay, you and I, I were here. In the, in the well, hold on here. I will add. I'm gonna let you guys fight as long as both your hands are free. When you're tired of, give me a clean break at all times. I'm a clean fight. Check it out now. And good luck to you both. Fifteen years ago, we were both here for that fantastic event. Ali coming out of exile to fight Jerry Quarry. I look in this fight for Tubbs not to use his jab as much early in the fight, but to try to stay inside the wide swinging punches of Witherspoon. That's what a good boxer would do. Round one, and we will see the pace of this fight early. It starts up very up-tempo. Well, right away, Tim Witherspoon went at Tony Tubbs. He won't, I'm sure he wants to keep that pressure going, knowing fully well, or assuming fully well, that uh, Tubbs can't maintain the movement. Because Tubbs trying to be elusive. Tubbs, the best he has going for him, he has beautiful hands, quick hands, beautiful combinations. With his boom, a very tenacious fighter, very physical fighter. Getting a good look at this round, incidentally, from our handheld cameras. We're going to try and stay on that as much as possible. You get a real close-up look as to just how this fight is going. And Tubbs going downstairs. See, the reason I was I was criticizing uh, the, the SS weight of Tony Tubbs is the fact that to fight a guy like uh, Witherspoon, you need mobility. You, be, you have to be able to utilize the ring and keep moving. And despite the fact that Tubbs is not one who really enjoys the rigors of training, he has been effective in later rounds. Both men looking to the body in the first round. Keeping those hands out with a spoon. Right hand in close by Tim Witherspoon. The first round is a very physical fight. Both guys are just trying to initiate that respect and dictate the tempo of the fight. So far, they're even. Witherspoon going downstairs. Tubbs has been content to do that for the better part of this round as well. Good body shot by Tubbs. Tubbs uses movement to, to get out of those bombs thrown by 
Jackson with this ball. I just want to see how long you can keep this up. It's only the first round, but you really have a feeling that conditioning might become a very important part of this fight. Pretty intense okay. round. Don't, don't neither don't fighter did any real down. damage. Okay? Don't do it right. Okay, I want you to throw a jab at his right hand. Sit down on that right hand to the belly and come out with the left hook to the head, okay? The right hand to the belly and the left hook to the head, okay? Right behind the back. Okay? You got it? You stay to your right. You want that round big. Alright, okay? breathe, breathe. Mm -hmm. Give me tongue. Give me tongue when you work. Working just like the strip now. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? This is Tim Witherspoon. Brandy, you keep that jab in his face, okay? Because you, you out jab him when you do jab, okay? okay. He can't out jab you, okay? You touch him with that jab. Take the box, man. Jab. Then you go with the right hand. Okay. Hit him with the left hook of the body. Then you can go on top. Okay. 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 Then you go That's Slim Jim Robinson, his trainer, talking. Slim Jim Robinson, who has been called by some Tim Witherspoon's greatest asset. He engineered the near win over Larry Holmes. A very fast-paced first round for both fighters. It was a good shot by Witherspoon, but back tubs up against the ropes. In fact, Witherspoon is much more the uh, quicker starter, whereas at Tubbs utilizes the ring a great deal. There's a good left jab. For that first round, both fighters went in. Down, downstairs, Witherspoon started to work the body. Witherspoon starting up and then going down. I wouldn't be surprised if Witherspoon stayed downstairs a couple rounds and just to slow down Tubbs. Because I doubt very seriously if Tubbs can carry that weight for, some, for 15 rounds. Good jab, good left jab by Tony Tubbs. for the body by Tubbs, who now opens up Witherspoon a little bit. You saw the hand speed of Tory Tubbs. Good fight here, what referee Nate Morgan said to Tony Tubbs. Okay, stand on him. Stand on him. Okay, 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 you try it. Come on. Come on, you try it. A very intense fight. Okay, come on now. Both fighters are really starting to get... Uh, frustrated with each other. A really up-tempo for a 15-round fight between two guys this big. <laughs> Crowd here at the Omni, incidentally, really into this fight. Oh, yeah, because I'm sure these guys, both guys have been, has been talking for the past week or so. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, this fight does have an added significance now. It's almost a case of sudden death because the loser is going to be out of the hunt. Uh, breathing through his mouth, but he has done that historically. He's done it in every fight we've seen him in. Which is a bad habit. Tubbs really. got to stay closer to Witherspoon in that round than in the first round, and I believe he thinks that he has the quicker hands at close quarters. Here's a replay of slow mo. He saw the wild right hand by Witherspoon, but he came back with a nice left to the body. And then Tubbs let loose with this salvo of punches. And he's leaning to you now. And here are the number of punches.
punches and subs is thrown through the right three rounds, why he's, why he's landing about a third. This is about his average, actually. Right. What? And with a spoon is thrown a few more, and he's landed a higher percentage. Again, that is not a qualitative analysis, it's a quantitative analysis. Well, talking, speaking again about the um, fact that Willisburg keeps that mouth open. It's a bad habit because you talk asking for a busted lip or either broken jaw. Keep, keep that mouth shut. See a little experience in touch. He's able to spin Willisburg. Yeah, just a note about experience, as a matter of fact, even though they've had a comparable amount of professional fights, Tony Tubbs had 120 amateur fights, and Tim Witherspoon had six. Six. I think what compensates uh, Witherspoon's uh, inexperience as far as an amateur boxer was the fact that his strength, his own physical strength, and great body. Tubbs is to uh, hit, and miss, hit and make his man miss, to be a counter puncher. Get his punches in, and then get outside. Said that Tubbs had 120 amateur fights. Make that 253 amateur fights. That's a lot of fights. I had only 160. Good jab. Stiff jab by Witherspoon. And a good left hand by Tubbs coming back. So both men scoring heavily here. And again. So I was trying to go to the body. In fact, he was successful, but he was caught by a left took by uh, Witherspoon. Both men are really thinking of him. At times, at times, Tubbs tried to utilize his boxing skill, but then all of a sudden, Witherspoon cuts the ring off, so he has the fight. So now, at this point, he's fighting uh, Witherspoon's fight inside, street fight. kind of retreating here, getting himself on the ropes, now fights off him. Witherspoon counter-punching very well. He ducked all of Tubbs' punches and came back with his own. We're talking good punches, good defense, good offense. Jim. Gotta stay downstairs. You're doing all right, Jim. Mm -hmm. You're doing all right, Jim. All right. All right. Keep him back in the ball away, that's all. You think he's going down? All right, yes, he is. He's going down. He's going down, Jim. Don't, 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 don't punch up just a little bit, okay? Huh? Keep the left hand up just a little bit. You can hit him a little bit more, too. All right. Okay. Find it, Jim. Okay, keep to that body. Working to the body. You, you're doing good, but when you step out there, come out with your hands up. Thank you. Do the right. Put your hands up. Relaxing. Thank you. Look for your good shot. Oh, open that. Open that. Open that. Open that. Look for your good shot. Okay? You don't want every round. Okay? All right. That's right. Don't get a tackle. This has been making this a long, grueling fight in which the last third of the fight probably will determine the outcome. A lot of good body punches so far in the first three rounds, Ray. A lot of body shots, a lot of vicious shots, so, um, more so by Witherspoon. Tubbs was throwing body shots, liver shots, but I think the most effective shots were thrown by Witherspoon. Once again, you saw a pretty good counter-punching right hand by Witherspoon. Good jab. And yes, tells us to keep that up. But I'm afraid the Witherspoon's not letting him. He's starting to crowd him now. Staying on top of him. Witherspoon's corner told him to bring the left hand up just a little bit. 
Witherspoon is still really trying to crowd uh, Tabs, mainly because it's a good it's a good move because you won't allow the boxer any punching room. So staying close to him doesn't allow him to get his punches off. Back to the body. dictating the tempo of the fight so far. In Tuck's quarter between rounds, they said, you won the first two. I'm not real sure. First three, I should say. I'm not real sure they were right. Tony Tuck shaking that right hand. All right. Just pressing the fight. Okay, come on. 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 Come like that, like uh, Tug's ready to do. Put both hands together. Work on both sides of the body. And again, a good counter punching right hand by Tim Witherspoon. Took two, but he gave one that was better. And another good right hand. It's a serious fight here. After the bell, and Nate Morgan finally breaks him up. Witherspoon's hot. So is the crowd. You take him on board. Don't get catted. Take to your right. Okay. Okay. One thing you can say clearly here is that both fighters are trying to to hurt the other guy. Okay. They're putting a lot of passion into their punches. How effective they are remains to be seen. There's Witherspoon throwing two not too effective punches. He throws long punches. They're not uh, paralyzing punches. They're not punches that make a guy feel he's out of there. But uh, they're hard punches, nevertheless. That was Witherspoon's best exchange of that round. They come to the fifth round. Great crowd here at the Omni. They've really been into the fight right from the opening bell. And they're for both fighters. One thing you have to really appreciate in um, Tony Tubbs, he has that natural talent. He has a gift. Very fast hands for a heavyweight, for a big man. I have to say that he doesn't really look appreciably bigger than he was the last time I saw him at 229. I realize he's 17 pounds bigger, but or 15 pounds bigger, but he really doesn't look that much bigger. <laughs> but Tony Tubbs is quite deceiving because there is no definition in his body, yet uh, his hand speed is, is really uh, incredible. And the fact that he's able to put combinations together so well is another uh, bit of amazement. Tubbs drop both hands and back up. Once again, Tony Tubbs trying to go downstairs. Witherspoon head hunting a little bit more. Double left jab, right hand to follow by Tony Tubbs. Again, both men are doing what they do best. Witherspoon working inside, really staying uh, the aggressor and trying to work the body, being very physical. Tony Tubbs, on the other hand, is using his hand speed, using his jab, using his combination, scoring points. 
couple times he tried it for the knockout. But I don't think he possessed the power to knock his man out early. Good stinging, Jay. Top short with both of those. Very short with both of those. That's a good right hand by Witherspoon. Might have been the best punch of the fight. He caught Tubbs on the, on the side of the head. Those type of punches, especially if you go, if you hit by a puncher, can daze you. And Tubbs finally gets himself off the ropes for a second. didn't go away. Now you may see some combinations here by uh, Tubbs. I think he waited for, or he tried to wait for it, was supposed to punch himself out. I counted about 10 or 12 hard body punches by Tubbs in that round. That's a lot of hard body punches in a round, Ray. Especially about a big man. That's a great deal of body shots. You don't see that sometimes in an entire fight. Isaac Hayes, Ray Perkins, there's Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. <laughs> Ali celebrating his 44th birthday today. Believe it or not, he sparred eight rounds with Tim Witherspoon on Monday, sparred 52 rounds in the last couple of weeks with various heavyweights. King again. King again is done. On HBO. Then for home boxing organization <laughs> will begin in April sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Spinks. And Michael Spinks. That was also Dominique Wilkins, one of the fine talents in the NBA, sitting alongside Larry Holmes. And in April, Michael Spinks and Larry Holmes for the IBF Heavyweight Championship. to look forward to here on HBO. March 22nd, of course. Franklin Thomas, Trevor Burbick, and then April Holmes Spinks. And tonight, pretty good go so far. And all the heavyweight contenders are eagerly just awaiting the, uh, the verdict of this fight. The outcome, because they are waiting for an opportunity to go for the big bucks, the big title. fight so far. This is the sixth round. We're going 15. Looks damaging left jab then to stop this one in his tracks. I noticed that at times, Tony Tubbs try, attempts to throw that uppercut. That's a very dangerous move, especially inside the way he, his body's positioned. Because by dropping that right hand to throw that uppercut, he's liable to be hit by a short left hook. And Witherspoon has that. There is the left hook, short. A little short. Okay, all right. Witherspoon does not appear to be quite as sharp with his punches as he was earlier. Well, now, because those first couple rounds were very fast-paced rounds. You may notice a lot of arm punches being thrown now. They both are waiting for their second win. Conditioning plays a major role 
around this this point of, uh, of the fight now, between the sixth, seventh, and eighth round. Okay, you're tied up. Come on, man. hold on. Come on, let's go. Sixth round. I thought that was Tubbs' best round. I don't know if this is a clear cut trend yet, but I sense in the last few rounds that Tubbs is beginning beginning to dominate a little bit with his skill. You understand what I mean? Okay. Tony, right behind the jab, and you got setting down a little bit more harder and harder with the right hand. What the hell is he talking about? You better get out of the head, okay? But don't do back up. Give me a good one. Okay. Uh, how's your mouth? This guy, you outsmart me. All right? You're hitting me with all kinds of shots that you want to hit me with. Stay relaxed. There was a good right hand at close quarters by Witherspoon. And a right yeah, to the yeah, stomach, right, right back to the body. from the champion. Lay down there. Who knows? Uh, maybe if Tony Tubbs trained real seriously, it would inhibit him. It might frazzle him. He just <laughs> one of those guys who just can't train. <laughs> He's a gamer. Football ought to be a gamer, right? <laughs> Round number seven. Both corners extremely confident that their man is doing it exactly right so far. A good left hand by Tubbs. Tubbs content to fight on the ropes occasionally, right? Well, he is, you know, really somewhat elusive because he's able to, uh, has very good upper body movement. So I think he's, you know, feels quite content against the ropes at times. And you heard Tubbs' corner say, don't step straight back. They want their man in close. Well, they don't want him step, uh, stepping straight back because he's, what's happening is creating momentum for the, the tight like fighter and with his phone because he's moving straight ahead. Need to give him angles, lateral movement. Side to side. This is the perfect, uh, the classic boxing confrontation, box against the puncher. That body shot seemed like it folded over Tony Tubbs just then. Witherspoon with a good body shot there. It's one of those fights you have the feeling could be won or lost in the corner. Both fighters stand to the body. That punch was caught largely on the arms, ripping body shots by Witherspoon. He's going for the, uh, the additional midsection. Those love handles he's going for. damaging shots by both men to the midsection. Tubbs can't stand straight up after he finished throwing a combination because that left hook off by Witherspoon is very, very powerful. This is trying to be a great fight. Two punches to the body and then one to the head by Tubbs. Good hand speed. And these guys are not dating up. No, the pace of the fight has been very quick. It's been fought at close quarters almost all the way. I don't think fatigue is any kind of a factor at this juncture. Again, not an exciting fight, not a dramatic fight. But a very rugged, grueling fight. Then a lot of hurting punches in close. Got over right hand behind that jab, okay? Okay. You ready to go? You ready to go? Okay. 
Put the straight right hand. Give me that the jab. If you hide his chin, put the straight right hand to the body. Comes off the left hook. And, it, and if you do, there's a sequence. A good left and a good right by Tubbs driving Witherspoon into the ropes. And Witherspoon will fight off the ropes. Right there, a left that's high, a good right to the body. Make a turn with the right hand in we're going to see soon, Ray, whether the body punches are going to take a serious toll on one or the other fighter. Well, that's what I'm waiting for because those shots, body shots, have been thrown by both men, and um, neither fighter has let up yet. I'm almost sure I heard Slim Jim Robinson in Witherspoon's corner say he's ready to go, which I find pretty hard to believe. Or perhaps it was in Tubbs' corner. That might be a little premature because Witherspoon looks, seems to be very strong at this point here. They also told him to change the pace, change the tempo. Meaning to pick things up or slow things down. I don't think he can, go, he can pick it up any faster. Tony Tubbs version of rope a here. He's just got the elbows tucked in. I mean, both fighters know exactly how to execute a body shot. They're putting their weight behind it, getting the leverage behind it. <laughs> and also, Tubbs appears to know exactly how to finish every meal. I'm, but I'm really surprised to see him at this weight. I mean, to be champion, fantasy plays a major part in your life and in your career. There is no truth to the rumor there'll be a lunch break after the 10th round, though. Look at now Tubbs coming back to life. I mean, both guys, this shows you both guys are in fantastic shape. Again, it's a very tactical fight. Tubbs has been on the ropes and letting Witherspoon take his best shots, taking most of them on the shoulders and the elbows. Coming out of it when he does in flurries. There's a left jab. And the right hand to fall. And a good left hand sends Tubbs into the ropes. It was a straight left hand. Both feet are together of Tubbs. Now he's using his weight. Maybe that's why he's putting additional weight to withstand the power of Witherspoon. But that left hook really had him in trouble for a second there. So those right hands are starting to uh, get through. Not clean, but the fact they're starting to land. That was a good, clean shot. I'll be able to tell whether or not that punch seriously uh, hurt Tup as he walked back to his corner. See if his legs are steady. He's got 10 seconds to get through round number eight. Come on, This is a very, very hard fight to judge. After eight rounds, I have it dead even. I could be eight rounds off. Okay. You understand that? When a fighter moves forward the way Witherspoon does, he always gets the benefit of the doubt. You understand what I mean? Put your head up. Okay? Now there's two lefts and a right, and a left downstairs, and Witherspoon followed with a left hook. And that's been the big surprise I found in this fight, Ray. Uh, he hasn't been known for the left hook. I think Slim Jim Robinson has been working on the left hook with him because he expects that Tubbs would be looking for that long right. Huh? Uh, he's okay. He's okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, I don't know, Ray. He did not go back on steady legs at the end of that round. No, uh, he walked back, and there was like a, a delay in his um, steps. And he was struggling from the corner to pick it up again. Well, he tried to pick it up, and he was hurt by left hook, a short left hook, by with a spoon. 
Talking about Slim Jim Robinson, uh, he's a, a great asset to the camper with the spoon because apparently he's showing him something that um, he wasn't using before in his career. That he has two hands and both fists carry dynamite. And again, against the ropes is Tubbs taking punishment from Tim Witherspoon. Not much movement from Tubbs. Could be one of two things, indication that um, that additional luggage he's carrying is starting to take his toll, or he's just trying to wait for Witherspoon to punch himself out. Witherspoon giving not much indication of that. Lost a little sharpness along about the fifth round. But he's come back rather effectively in the last couple. Well, you'll notice when Witherspoon is able to either rock Tubbs, since the general starts flowing, he gets to become more aggressive. The other thing applies to Tony Tubbs. Neither man is marked. We're in the ninth round. Those hands should be up of Tubbs. Witherspoon has that leaping, looping rather, right hand. And um, he puts a lot of body behind him. You see there, he's, he's way away from the right hand of Tubbs. Witherspoon counterpunching effectively with the left hand. Once again, back to the body. Okay, first you will. Fighters not really throwing the punches now. They're taking a taking a breather here. Chopping right hand, and Witherspoon comes back with another combination. The interesting thing about the heavyweight division, and it intrigues me, they it exchange hands so many times. One guy's champion for a few days or a few months, and the next thing you know, you find a new champion. So far, both these guys looking better than I've ever seen either one of them look. Well, they both prepared themselves mentally, physically, and waiting. <laughs> Second, as you mentioned earlier, more heavyweight championship boxing here on HBO, becoming the heavyweight network. Pinkland Thomas versus Trevor Burbick. That's Saturday, March 10th, 10 o'clock Eastern. We'll be live. Larry Merchant, Sugar Ray Leonard, myself, Barry Tompkins. We'll be on hand for that one. Make his legs a little bit more. We win this shit. Huh? We win this shit. Watching with a spoon, I, right. okay. I wonder. Smoke on him, okay? Can a man learn how to play the trumpet when he's 21 years old? I mean, he started to fight when he was 21, and it's not easy being in there with someone who started when he was a teenager. But he's uh, mature in terms of his approach to what's going on here, and uh, so that we have a battle in a sense between will and skill. Number 10. Tough fight. I, I see a fairly even fight, although the um, Witherspoon has come on uh, a couple rounds. So um, give him a slight edge. But we're far from finish here. Witherspoon still looks fresh. Maybe the fresher of the two right at the moment. Good body shot by Witherspoon. Been talking to Tony Tubbs now, just saying, come on, come on. 
Yes, because he wants him to get closer so he'll fight his fight. Tubbs, um, no particular stay on the outside at this point. And throw his little body shots. There. Those, those liver shots. As he throws his left hook, he comes back with the left jab to keep his man at bay. Now we're back towards the corner. Might be fought more at long range in this round than it has at any other time. Telling him again to keep the punches up. Okay, come on. Right. Uh, the punching left hand by Witherspoon, the better of that exchange. What's been working um, for Tubbs has been the double left jab in the right hand, but he's always countered by the left hook. I wouldn't have scored. So at least come back with some, some uh, left hook after he finishes the right hand. Start looking for it. Okay. You talking about okay. being in another ball okay. fight? Okay. Right. You know what I want you to do? Huh? Do that double left hook. Draw him inside. Okay. Do the double left hook and chop him down with the right hand. And overhand and right, okay? Right behind see. the double left hook. Run to the body and bring him straight up. Put the jab straight. Get him with your right. 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 Okay? You have to believe you okay. know the of 38 of them. How do you feel? Feel good, man. Feel good. There ain't no what problem behind you. Do you see shots that you uh. need to take? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. You're going to get him. Take it out. I love you. Relax. Okay? We got five. You're going to go. We got five more rounds. Can you start? Okay? Can you start? Let's go, Chandler. 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 Let's go, a lot of support for Tony Tubbs in his corner. His handlers assuring their fighter that they're behind him. Telling him to get in close once again. And we'll see now if Tony Tubbs can do that. Witherspoon has started to dictate the tempo again over the last three rounds. of those guys' body shots just echoes throughout the arena. With us going up on his toes right now, looking very fresh. This is the 11th round. But Tough said in this corner, he told his guys that he feels great. Tubbs can fight inside too. Okay, 
no damage really being done here. Again, it's been a tactical fight almost the entire way. It's not Ali Fraser, but it's a rugged go. Okay, you're rugged go, baby. This this had a dog ass tie. You're gonna have to open him up with the jab and, and put that right hand on. Overhand and right, just like you don't have tap him down. Okay? Okay, if you hide the hand, put the right hand to the body. Okay? You're doing beautiful. Beautiful. You're going right the strip. Okay? I'm not gonna tell you. Okay. What you tell The trainer is Odell Hadley Got from it? California. You're doing beautiful. All right, tell me. Yeah. Okay? You got double left hook going to see him chopping down with the right hand. You put the, high, right. the hook behind it this time. Uh-huh. Come on, make it sure. Okay. Come on. Come on. Do that one, all right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to crowd you now. Okay. Take a step back. Okay. Take a step back. Give me a watch him out. Come on. Now give that stuff out of here. This is round number 12. And it's still up for grabs, I think. I would agree, because both fighters have really been working and throwing a lot of punches. Witherspoon has landed the most effective shots. is as far as Tim Witherspoon has ever gone. We're in the 12th now. But one thing is for sure, the additional weight does not slow the hand speed of Tony Tubbs. I just, I really felt this was slow the movement of Tubbs. Odell Hadley is saying that he wants him to come over the top with the right hand. And when the, uh, when his hand, his left hand is up, to go to the body. And you have not seen that much movement from Tubbs. Tubbs normally uses his uh, boxing skill. Here I think he's just using his experience and uh, willing to exchange punch for punch inside with uh, Tim Witherspoon. Tubbs continues to try to dig downstairs. Once again, Witherspoon has turned southpaw. And, and doing so, he has a tendency to uh, confuse his opponent. That's a left hand by Tubbs. I don't know what it seemed like that left hook bothered uh, Witherspoon. Or just made him mad. Okay, all right. It's a deeper water for Tim Witherspoon. He's left them 12. Has beyond 12 rounds. Maybe that's what Tub is waiting for. The final three rounds. The final three rounds, but that uh, would be a bad, bad move. This Tubbs has only gone 15 rounds once also. But he's tasted it. Tubbs 
in my judgment has come on in the last few rounds, but it's still a very, very tough fight. I don't I, to call. I don't recall a fight where I've had as much trouble picking the winners of so many individual rounds. Okay. 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 He putting his chin on the platter. He done brought the chin now. Let's do it. This is what we playing. Now let's drown this punk. Okay? Okay, watch it. I'm just sitting right here. Get that right hand to the chin. Take it home, baby. Okay? Bring him home now. Tony. Yeah. Okay? Start pushing. Three more to go. Don't let don't let him back up. Side to side go okay. forward. He tired of him. Bring him home. Odell Hadley whipping his horse home. Putting his chin on the platter. Was Odell's way of putting it? That means that he's got Witherspoon's head down. Now if he can just find the chin. Let's see if he can push the magic button here. Well, these three rounds, you let, they say very important rounds. In fact, they, they, they are very important rounds. They don't want Tubbs to move straight back. They want him to move from side to side. Because normally judges give uh, the edge to the aggressor. The guy who's making the fight. Witherspoon has said himself that he's won a lot of fights because he is the aggressor. And he's done that in this fight also. Once again, Tubbs covering up, but most of those punches are being caught on the arms. That right hand was not caught on the arms, however. Oh, beautiful shots. Those punches land. The left hook, the right hand, were able to get through by Tim with the school. A Tubbs should use his combination, use his hand speed, and build up some points. Been the harder puncher. I don't think there's any question about that. Tubbs, when he has knocked opponents out, has worn them down. You notice there he had Witherspoon missing. That's the key to the fight for Tubbs. Left hand just a little bit short by Witherspoon. But every time that he makes Witherspoon miss, he should counter. Come back with something. Again, he made a miss. He needs to come back with something. Tubbs needs to counter. And he has made his reputation as a counter puncher. Okay, fight your way out of it. Fight out of it. Two more rounds to decide a winner. And you have a feeling that those two rounds may decide the winner. It's too. a tough fight to call at this point. A very difficult fight. <laughs> Witherspoon hammering on Tubbs, going downstairs and then upstairs at the bell. Close up with a good finish, okay? Man. Tony, you got a feeling in hustle like well, you see the number of punches is starting to dwindle as the fight goes on. Although Witherspoon threw a lot of punches in that round. That was clearly Witherspoon's round. And and here is the rally on the ropes as the round ended. There are two theories of scoring that are coming into conflict here. One, if the fight is this close, do you take the title away from the champion? And two, if the fight is close, do you give it to the aggressor? 
which is the other guy. <laughs> the other guy, yes, it is. It's tough. It's uh, going to be in the eyes of the beholder, you have the feeling. Well, what is Paul trying to get the eye of the, um, the, the fans here? I sensed a little bit of concern in the corner of Tony Tubbs. Just seconds before the end of the 13th round, Witherspoon was able to take that round because he stayed on top of Tubbs and threw a lot of punches. Tubbs trying to box now. Saw those fight stat numbers a moment ago that in the last three rounds, Tim Witherspoon has thrown twice the amount of punches as Tony Tubbs. So if in fact the judges are looking for the aggressor, they have him. He's the guy in the blue trunks. And still he swarms over Tony Tubbs. He's not giving him any breathing room, not in the punching room. He's standing right in his chest. See, normally uh, Tubbs be moving. That additional weight has hurt him. It's proven to be fatal for him. while Tubbs corner screaming at him to go to the body. Left hand forces Tubbs back. Tubbs needs to reach down at this point, Barry, because um, this, the title is starting to slip away from him. Yes, it is a close fight, but what's happening here is Witherspoon has been dominated just a little bit more. He's been uh, far more aggressive in the later rounds than Tubbs. He's landing the king of blows at this point than Tubbs. You really don't know that it was the conditioning or whether he took too many body shots. But as I said earlier, he didn't give himself the best chance. And in a close fight like this, it could be the difference. Don't let him stumble on you. He's coming on you. He's coming on you. And then you get away. Okay? Make him pay. Show that you win it. Okay? You can't take nothing for granted. Okay? You got to win every round. You got to go out there and push this round and knock this guy out. Knock out as sure as you win. All right? I'm going to push that in. You got to take yeah. this him big. Okay? Let's win this one. Let's go home with it. Okay? Let's go home with it. Okay? Let's go home with it. Let's get on with it. Okay? It's a split decision. You see it, Tommy, Tim with the spoon, and uh, Tony. And Slim Jim Robinson saying, if you knock him out, you don't have to worry about it. Well, There's always the best way to do things. Okay, come on, get out of here. I see a very concerned touch corner. Interesting decision. Of course, they say you got to take the title away from the champion. And Witherspoon has been aggressive, and as you mentioned in the last round, right, particularly so in the late going. And that's when it really counts because the uh, judges remember those last 
you seconds when you come back. Witherspoon not holding anything back here, and Tubb still seems unable just to get any real power on track. Normally we see a Tubbs counter-punching, using that jab, using the hand speed. Here we see a Tubbs uh, willing to fight inside, exchange punch for punch with a stronger opponent as Tim Witherspoon. Tubbs has been very susceptible to body shots, some vicious body shots. All right, come on, all right, get out of it, get out of it, get out of it. This round being fought in the middle of the ring. Halfway through the final round. I'm sure both fighters will talk to themselves after this fight. Um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Willis will be very, very pleased. I'm sure Tal will be quite disappointed. Because he fights better than this. does punch he seems to punch off his back feet too back leg doesn't really seem to have the power comes doing more leading than punching here crowd has seen a very exciting fight very interesting fight I mean, a few additional pounds can make on a fighter. There's a good left hand by Witherspoon. And a right hand. There'll be no knockout in this one. I've given the fight to Witherspoon. And if he gets it, I think it's fair to say that he earned it. of course feel their man has won the fight Witherspoon being lifted up on one side of the ring Tony Tubbs hands clasped over his head and a victory sign on the other side of the ring I would think that I would say that uh, Tubbs made this fight a lot more difficult than it could have been by putting on that additional weight and this is what I always said that fighters need to be more disciplined you have an obligation to yourself and to the public to be in the best of shape when you enter these four squares especially as champion tough fight. Let's take a look at the way Tim Witherspoon ended this fight, Ray, and he ended it with some bombs. Well, I think this is one of the reasons that Witherspoon should walk away with the decision. He stayed on top of Tubbs. He fought this way the entire fight, and um, Tubbs never really was on his toes, never really utilized what his boxing skill possessed, the good hand speed, the good left jab. No doubt that Tim Witherspoon came in here, as you can see by the total punches thrown, he threw almost 130 punches more, 125 punches more than did Tony Tubbs. And he scored more effectively too, 43% to Tubbs 38%. He forced the fight, and I think that's the bottom line. Well, the statistics are quite surprising to see that the puncher punched more, or threw more punches than the boxer who possessed so much talent. And so the decision still to come. Both camps pretty confident. That's the littlest Witherspoon. 15 rounds! Man is proud of himself of going 15 rounds. I think he has reason to do so. You can tell he came in here a fit fighter. Well, we sweet tonight we saw a rejuvenated uh, Tim Witherspoon. A Witherspoon that saw an opportunity to get advantage of it. Well, he learned by his mistakes. I don't think there's any question about that. He had Larry Holmes beat. He ran out of gas. Well, well, the fact that once you had a, uh, a perfect record and you lose, you need to do one or two things to you. It either destroys you mentally and physically, or it makes you a better fighter. In this case, it made Tim Willisville a much better fighter. Taking some time for the decision here. That's Carl King walking through your shot. Formerly the manager of Tim Witherspoon. They had their problems, of course, the two of them. Witherspoon this time said he came in here with no problems outside the ring. His only problem, and the only one he had to concern himself with, was Tony Tubbs. That was not the case in his last couple of fights, most particularly the one he lost to Pinkland Thomas. 
Tim Witherspoon once said that they treat us like racehorses. They race us till we drop and then they shoot us. That was in reference to some of the management problems that he's had. And you kind of have the feeling that that might all be behind the man. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Brad Nessler, and we'll get the official decision. Brad? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Split decision. Judge Harry Sanchini scores the fight 144-143. Judge Robert Ferrara scores the fight 143-143 even. Judge Edward Woods scores the fight 144-141 for the winner and new heavyweight champion of the world, Tim, Tim Witherspoon has won it. And it was as close and as confusing as Larry Merchant had said he thought it would be. Hard-earned victory for the new champion. Tough loss for the old champion. I thought that Witherspoon won the fight. I felt that uh, he was aggressive, and um, I'm sure Tubbs gonna, will, should admit, or probably will admit, that um, he was not as serious or sincere about his training and as his career as he should have been. It cost him a title, it cost him money, it cost him recognition. Larry Merchant is with Tony Tubbs. Let's get to Larry Merchant right now. Tony, what did you think of the decision? Well, I know the fight was close. But I figured I scored more to the body. I stayed in on the body and I scored more cleaner shots. Tim threw good shots, but I caught most of the shots. But I ain't, I ain't complaining because I'm still in my learning stages. You know. Did the, did the extra weight hurt you? No, but well, see, like I told you before, I had a few injuries and I couldn't train for like two and a half weeks when I wanted to get my weight down. I just trained for this fight. Did, you feel, did you feel it dragging you on at the end of the fight? The last three rounds seemed well, like tough rounds for you. The last three rounds, Tim was more tired than I was. I should have pressed him more. But I wanted to wait on the clean shots because you can get careless and Tim would come over with that overhand. But get a credit to Tim because the judges made the decision. I, I, I'm not a crybaby. Thank you, Tim. Thanks. The Tony, we'll be back with Tim Witherspoon in a moment. Now back to ringside. And so Larry Merchant talking with a gracious Tony Tubbs, and I guess that's really about all he could say is, the judges made their decision, and everybody seems to agree, and I think even Tony Tubbs agrees it was the right decision, right? Well, I think Tubbs realized that uh, the additional weight did cost him the fight, cost him a championship, cost him money, cost him recognition. Um, he claimed he was ill, and that could have been the case. He did say one thing that was interesting. He said that he felt that Tim Witherspoon was more tired at the end of the fight than he was. Yes, but the key to the whole fight was the fact that Witherspoon remained the aggressor. Witherspoon did take the fight to him. That's always been an adage in boxing, that you've got to take the fight to the champion if you're going to win it. And that is what Tim Witherspoon did. I have to feel that's what the judges saw. Well, from round one, Witherspoon was in there. He made the fight. He stayed on top of uh, Tubbs. Tubbs retaliated a, a number of times. A very close fight, like he stated. But I think those last few rounds were the special rounds that would, you know, we made the decision easier to call. Let's get back up to the center of the ring now. Larry Merchant is with the winner and new champion, Tim Witherspoon. Larry? All right, Tim Witherspoon, you've regained the title. What did you attribute your win tonight to? Hard training. Tony Chubbs giving me a chance to fight him. And um, just a lot of hard training and ded dedication and, and, and getting my mind together for this fight. Do you, did you, you saw that he was overweight. What did that mean to you? I didn't hear that. Huh? Uh, hard to, I didn't hear the uh, All right, Sorry. you didn't hear the question. He was overweight, clearly. Right. He was heavy. Right. What did that mean to you? That means that I, I knew I could work hard, put the pressure on him, because uh, when he won the title, he was much lighter. And I think his mind was, wasn't right when he came in at 244 because he didn't fight in nine months. I knew that uh, he wasn't ready me mentally. At, at the end of the fight, there were periods where you seemed tired, but at the end of the fight, you came on. Do you attribute that to the fact that you were in better shape than him? Yes, I do. But um, I, I got to give it to him. He was in good shape. He wasn't breathing hard. And uh, I just had the determination and a lot of things in front of me 
you know, the game, and I didn't want to lose him, so I just pushed hard. Just a word, you know about the series of heavyweight championship fights that's coming up to, to unify the heavyweight title. What are your thoughts about it? Uh, just here was a hard fight and a good workout, and he was a great champion, but this is getting me ready for revenge on Pinkman Thomas or Larry Holmes. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to start training real hard because I want it all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Uh, okay. Thank you. So, let's see, a few words about what we've seen tonight and what we've heard tonight and some other stuff. What we saw here basically was a fellow who uh, wanted it more in terms of training harder won the fight. A close fight went to the man who wanted it. Now we have three heavyweight champions still, all from the Philadelphia area. If I personally had to rate them, I would make it Pinklin Thomas number one. Spinks, number two, and Tim Witherspoon, number three. Finally, another word about the series of heavyweight championship fights that HBO has agreed to air over the next 14 or 15 months in the hopes of unifying the title. Basically, it's in two brackets, the WBA, the WBC, and those two champions eventually will meet. In the other bracket, Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks. And as they come through that bracket, the winners will ultimately meet for the title. I should add to this that it's an open-ended tournament. That is, nobody is barred. Anybody who is qualified to challenge for a championship by the rules of the WBA, the WBC, or the IBF can enter the tournament. I stress that because there's been already some noise from Jerry Cooney about being excluded from the tournament. But by the rules of the IBF, he does not qualify as yet until he fights a rated fighter and gets in, into the ratings himself. Jerry Cooney seems to be the, a, a kind of a football player who doesn't want to play the regular season or even the playoffs just in the Super Bowl. And that doesn't work. He wants to be a champion, but not a fighter. And the heavyweight champion should be a fighter. Back to you, Barry. Okay, thanks very much, Larry Ray. The interesting thing for me, at least, I think, is that I was more impressed both with Tim Witherspoon and with Tony Tubbs tonight than I have been at any other time that I've seen either of them fight. Well, I was impressed with the conditioning, although not the weight of Tony Tubbs. I was impressed with the determination of Tim Witherspoon, the fact that Tim Witherspoon put everything in perspective, went for one ultimate thing, the championship, and he got it. You know, I think the bottom line of the whole thing really is that Tim Witherspoon had something left in the tank, and Tony Tubbs just had the tank. We want to remind you that we will have more...